Hello, and thanks for joining us here on France Bank Cat for Tech 24. I'm Tom Burgess Watson. Coming up in today's program, our team takes you to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress. The biggest annual phone, tablet, and mobile gadget bonanza on the planet. We'll be telling you what's creating all the buzz there. Plus, in Test 24, is it Africa's answer to the iPad? We check out the Congo born Way C with its much lower price tag than its Apple rival is making big waves in emerging markets. We've got all that coming up, but we start in Barcelona with all the latest from the Mobile World Congress, which is a four-day mobile phone, tablet and gadget fest, drawing vendors and attendees from across the globe in record numbers. Lots of peculiar new names for concepts and products like the ice cream sandwich and pairing and wearing, terms that no doubt will sound perfectly normal in a year or so's time. We're here to make us help us make sense of it all is our resident tech editor, Eric Olander. Eric, what are the main issues and trends there in Barcelona this year? Tom, at an event this large, there's always a lot that comes out of it. The key event that came out of this year's Mobile World Congress is operating systems. And there's a veritable war underway right now between Android, Apple's iOS, a new player on the scene, HTML5, and of course, the old standby Windows. All right. Well, more than a billion mobile phones are made every single year. It's a crowded market. France Fine Cats, Rebecca Baring was there in Barcelona and she profiles now three new phones, each one targeting a very different corner of the market. Let's take a look. This is the Panasonic Eluga 4.3 inch OLED screen and it's running Google's Android Gingerbread. And the thing it has in common with its big sister, which will be coming out this summer, is that it's completely waterproof. Watch, I can do this for Eric Olander, drop it in. Absolutely fine. Swish it around a bit. Take it out. I can use the camera to take a photo of this lovely lady. This is a Nokia 808 Pure View. And what does it have that other telephones don't? Well, this. It's a 41 megapixel sensor. As you can see, it takes magnificent photos. If I zoom in, we don't lose any of the quality. It's going to be released in the second quarter of the year, costing around 600 euros. On the other end of the spectrum, we have this prototype made by Telefonica in conjunction with Qualcomm and also Zilla. It's an open web device, which means that anyone can develop applications for it. And it's also super cheap. The materials here cost less than $100. It's meant to target Latin America and Africa when it comes out later this year. All right, so as we saw there, the phones are just keep getting smarter. But my question to you, Eric, is can the networks handle that volume of data? Well, it's turning out that they can't. We're seeing in the United States more and more this issue of throttling. And that's when the networks are actually squeezing the amount of data that goes through their pipes. Now, what's going through the pipes? The pipes are filled with videos and pictures and all these wonderful apps on all these incredibly smart phones. The problem is, as we all know, when we're using those phones, we can't actually make calls or it gets very, very slow. The network operators are having to squeeze down the amount of compression in terms of what's going through their pipe in order to make room for all this content that's going through. So as the, sm the phones get smarter, the pipes aren't getting bigger fast enough, and that's really the big problem right now. Yeah, and that is precisely the point that the president for Ericsson's China and Northeast Asia operation had to make. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. It's a tremendous explosion of smartphones. Today we have about 15% smartphone penetration in China. And this year alone we'll add another 100 million new smartphones. If you consider the amount of traffic growth and signaling growth that that will cause to the network, to the Chinese operators, you really need to build your networks from the beginning designed to cater for this tremendous traffic. So it's really about building very, very capable networks that really can deal with high capacity. All right, let's have a quick look at some of the other concepts there in Barcelona. And we've already seen Rebecca Bowering's been getting very hands on there. And she tells us now about a new concept that brings new meaning to the term wireless. It's called pairing and wearing. Ericsson has 
the largest stand here at Mobile World Congress, and I've come along to take a look at Connected Me. On is with me. So how does this work? Works that I turn myself into a cable. I use natural properties of my body, and I also connect it to the habits of touching things. And I take it this picture of you, and I want your help to get it up on the larger screen. screen. Yeah, okay. please put your hand on that. Yeah, and one hand on there. And I make a circuit, and my yeah. head appears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are sending you through your arms. And what are the uses of this technology? It could be open doors. I have an application where my access codes are, are open doors. I want to get a web link out or something. I just touch it and get it into my, my smartphone. And it's called pairing and wearing? Yes, that is, a, that is a term we have been using. I mean, today when you have a Bluetooth device, you need to, to, to connect it through the smartphone. Instead, just pair it and wear it. That's it. Thanks very much for showing us that, Jan. Thank you. All right, stay with us because it's time in a moment for Test 24. Now, it's been available in 12 countries in Africa since late January. The Way C is the latest tablet to make inroads in emerging markets. And it's also trying to break into the market here in France as well as in Belgium and India. It launched in Brazzaville and it has a $300 price tag. So it's considerably cheaper than an iPad designed in Congo, assembled in China. Eric, is it any good and does it pose a threat in your view to the iPad? It absolutely does not pose a threat to the iPad. This, of course, is the way see from VMK in uh, Brazzaville, of all places. This is, I think, one of the first pieces of technology that we've seen come out of Congo or come out of even sub-Saharan -Sub Africa like this. It's an excellent little tablet right here. I mean, it is about seven inches. It's very durable. It's got a nice plastic back, which is very nice, much more durable than what we see with the iPad, which has that nice shiny back, which scratches so easily. This is not a threat to the iPad. At the end of the day, the iPad is a device that really isn't catering to the African market at five, six hundred dollars per unit without any type of subscription, the iPad can go up to $1,000 retail. So at the end of the day, this will not compete against the iPad, but it is part of a very important trend that we're seeing right now going towards the developing market and emerging markets where you're seeing low-cost devices in India and in Congo, and you'll see more of these coming out. And how is it that they managed to make something that cheap? Well, what they're doing is two things. There are two very important trends. We talked earlier in the show about the operating system war. Right now, we're seeing two free operating systems out there, Android and HTML5. So by using an operating system that's absolutely free, unlike Apple iOS or unlike Windows on the, from Microsoft, anybody can use this. So what's happening now is that people are using these operating systems and going to places like China or India for low-cost manufacturing. That's how they're keeping the cost down. And so I was going to say, well, why isn't it 100% made in Africa then? Simply because the supply chains aren't there, the engineering talent is there. It takes a lot of know-how to put a device like this together, and it's very, very complicated to do. So they will get there. But they're not there yet. All right. Thank you very much indeed, Eric Olander. That was Test 24. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. You can keep in touch with us on all the usual social networks, details appearing on your screens. I'm going to leave you with the exploits of Rebecca and Guillaume. They are our Tech24 team, and they're at that Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And as ever, ready for any challenge. This time, it's dance, a dance-off with a couple of Intel androids. And on that note, we're going to leave you. Thanks for watching. Do stay tuned to France 24.